to the bench is right here, right where the green garbage can at. This is the bench she was sitting on. Right there. Her name was Rakia Boyd. Martinez Sutton is her older brother. 22-year-old Rakia and a large crowd have been here in Chicago's Douglas Park, celebrating a warm March night in 2012. At around midnight, an off-duty police officer named Dante Servan called 911 from his home across the street to complain about the noise. This is the house, um, the light brown one. At around 1 a.m., Rikia and her friends walked along this sidewalk. So they walked down this sidewalk. They was confronted right here in an alley by the police officer. By this time, Servan had left his home and drove his car up the alley. What happened next is contested. What we do know is that words were exchanged, and moments later, the off-duty officer fired five shots. One of those bullets struck Rakia in the head. She was unarmed. About right here. It was like, right here, laying down, face down, in the alley. Do you know, is that Dante Servan's car right there? That's the same car he was in, black Mercedes Benz. Same car he was in when it happened. Only difference is he got tinted windows now. That's it. So the west side of Chicago came up with this. Um, it was like wanted posters, basically. Killed by Officer Dante Servant. I am Rakeel Boy. Who's next? That's who's next really ring a, ring a bell, because after we killed, we had so many more. Since 2012, Martinez has returned to this alley to say his sister's name. In the US, black women are being killed by police at a rate of one a month. One in four are unarmed. Their stories have often gone untold. They don't talk about women that much when they get killed by the police. They barely talk about women. Why is that? It's crazy because you see that even in death, women play the second role. The Say Her Name movement responds to increasing calls for attention to police brutality against black women by offering a resource to help ensure that black women's stories are integrated into demands for justice and that policy responses to police violence and media representations of victims of police brutality. There is growing outrage tonight after an unarmed African-American teenager was shot and killed by police. Violence against black women is very real. Why is it that their lost lives don't generate the same amount of media attention and communal outcry as the lost lives of their fallen brothers? Women's names have slipped through our consciousness because there are no frames for us to see them, no frames for us to remember them, no frames for us to hold them. We have to be willing to bear witness to the often painful realities that we would just rather not confront. The everyday violence and humiliation that many black women have had to face.
Based on our research, police brutality against African American women has intensified, has been underreported, and is unjustifiable. Brian King is a second grade elementary school teacher who was pulled over for allegedly speeding in June of 2015 when this happened. Man, take a seat back in the car, please. Take a seat back in your vehicle, please. Okay, man, we're being pulled over right now, so I need to take a seat back in the car. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am, I'm not joking. You see your driver's license? You're being stopped for speeding. When I'm already stopped, so technically can you stop me? Because yes, you didn't pull me over because I parked. You only talk, ma'am, you were about to go inside without a wallet, so I know you were only coming here because you know I was coming to pull you over. Mm -hmm. I can ask them to stop you if you've already parked, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, let me see your driver's license. All right, take a seat back in your car so we can close the door. Mm -hmm. Put your feet back in the car so I can close the door. Can you please. Please okay, ma'am, stand up for me, okay? okay. No. No, why are you Get kidding of, me? Stop oh my God. Stop resisting. Oh my God. Stop resisting. Um, what is Stop about? resisting. What are you? Stop resisting right now. Get out of the car. I'm getting out. Let me get out. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. Get out of the car now. Help. Oh my God. Put your hands behind your back. Oh my God. Put your hands behind your back. You are under arrest. Put your hands behind your back. Why are you doing this? Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Oh my God, are you serious? Put your hands behind your back. Oh my God. I'm about to taste you. Put your hands behind your back. 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 Oh my God, I'm coming to the Put your hands behind your back. That's what I was doing. Are you serious? God. Don't stand up. I'm not trying to stand up. I'm trying to put my hands behind my back. Are you serious? I do have several bull cracks. Quit moving your hands. You just hit me so you can get them back. Marlene Pinnock is a great grandmother who was approached by police on the side of a Los Angeles freeway and beaten. It happened during Tuesday evening's rush hour. Drivers traveling along one of LA's busiest freeways could see the highway patrol officer follow an unidentified woman across the on ramp. He then threw her to the ground and repeatedly punched her as she tried to block his blows. David Diaz recorded the incident on his cell phone camera. Natasha McKenna, a devoted mother, was killed in police custody in Fairfax jail after being tased repeatedly while being shackled to a chair. The video begins with an officer explaining that they were going to transport McKenna to a different cell because she had exhibited noncompliance during custody. You promised that you wouldn't kill me. I'm going to kneel down. Kneel down. Man, if you don't kneel down, man, kneel down. Kneel down on the ground. I've got one more. Officers repeatedly told McKenna to get on her knees and stop resisting. At one point, McKenna fell to the ground. If you continue to resist, we're going to use the taser on you. Do you understand what that means? Officers then used a stun gun on McKenna four times as they tried to restrain her in a chair. McKenna has been diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and depression. Her death sparks a nationwide outcry about how African Americans and the mentally ill are treated in police custody. According to the African American Policy Forum, black women and girls make up 13% of the U.S. population. Yet make up 33% of all women killed by police. And white women make up 64% of the women in the U.S., but are only 44% of fatal police shootings of women. <laughs>
Therefore, this data suggests that black women and girls are targeted more than white women and girls for police brutality and killings, most likely due to the racial biases of the officers. The biases that these officers display can be seen in many videos online. What's happening right now? Who's outside? What are they trying to do? Do you want to go out there? Shot at all, you hear me? Four Smith, get EMS in her out. We got the car, it's flipped over. Smoking. She's trying to get that gun out. Let's go on the rifle! The rifle out of his log back there. Four Smith, we got one tased. Four Smith, get EMS in her out. We got the car. I've been harassed by the police about nine or ten times. I hear a lot of similar stories from my friends. We felt really powerless. It was overwhelming. It was degrading. We felt like, one, they were the police. Two, they were men. My name is Crystal Pope. Um, I live on 143rd between Hamilton Place and Broadway. Me and three friends are actually sitting on these benches right here. As we're sitting here, a police paddy wagon pulled up. They were looking for um, a rapist that was on the move in Hamilton Heights. So with that being said, it was three females there. So we still like, all right, we're females though. You're looking for a male rapist. So we thought in a way that, you know, they were gonna just get our ID, check it and leave us after that. One of my friends became really hostile. They began to search her, but it wasn't like a regular search that we would be okay with from a man. But then more or less with the pattern of the back pockets and then the front pockets, I felt it was really like, okay, now I'm overstepping my boundaries. I feel very threatened by the police, for one. I don't feel like it's someone or anyone that you would call on when you need help. It never turns out good in the situation in this neighborhood. Unfortunately, I'm no longer surprised by stories, but I am continue to be deeply enraged by them. For 20 years, I've been constantly hearing, you know, well, black and brown men are targets, black and brown men are profiled, and just almost as a, a reflex and said, and women, and black and brown women, and black and brown women. The rates of racial disparities in stops for women are the same as they are for men, but we never were able to get that into the center of the conversation. Today makes it three years to the exact day. She was driving up this street, Church Avenue, and swerved around uh, a taxi. But when she swerved around, there was an oncoming van that she was trying to swerve out from and, and turn and hit this pole. An uh, unmarked police car, Detective Atkins and his partner, he went to the vehicle with his gun drawn. He tries to pull her out of the vehicle and his gun discharged. And she was pulled out of the vehicle where she stumbled right onto the white line and, and, uh, and died right there. Our family stands here because three years ago, we lost my niece Chantel to a shooting by NYPD. The media, when they told the story, 
It was high speed chase, mastermind criminal. It was almost as if she was deserving of this death. To be afraid of law enforcement, the people who are supposed to serve and protect you, is heartbreaking. What was initially sort of a minor offense very quickly became a death sentence. And it became a death sentence because police officers were responding to those women based on narratives and perceptions about black women as inherently violent, as inherently animalistic, as inherently superhuman, as inherently a threat, but also as lives that are inherently not valuable. In your lap okay, right I there. Know. I just don't want to put my hands down. I'm really sorry. I'm just... It's just really strong. No, no, no. I've just seen way too many videos of problems. But you're not black. Remember, we only kill black people. Yeah, we only kill black people, right? Okay. All the videos you've seen, have you seen any white people get killed? You have. This graphic, created by the Use of Force Project, shows what new use of force policies departments have adopted that ultimately lead to fewer killings. For example, when officers were required to use all other means before shooting, their police department had 25% fewer killings. So what can you do to help? Speak up, don't be a bystander, join the movement and be a voice, start conversations about police violence against African American women, educate yourself, educate others, and most importantly, say their names. It's easy to get involved. Our group brought attention to Say Her Name by putting up several posters around campus and making a Twitter page showing the videos and statistics behind the movement. Black women are killed by police too. Say their names, remember their faces. This movement is about them too.